Janice, I want to thank you very much for coming on the show here at the Nursing Show. It's, it's a pleasure to invite you to join us and talk about wound and ostomy care today. Um, but I'd like to start off with my question that I ask all the nurses that I have on the show. And that is, uh, tell us a little bit about you and why you wanted to become a nurse. Um, I'm very glad to be with you today, and I'm very happy to answer that question since I think nursing is a wonderful career and a tremendously good profession. I can tell you from my personal experience, both my sister, my older sister who is a nurse anesthetist, and myself got interested in nursing because our youngest uh, sibling, our only brother, was b born with congenital heart disease. Mm. And both of us were around, she was 11, I was 8 when he was ill, and we can remember going with our mother to the um, primary care physician with him and also helping her take care of him, mixing his medicine and doing things like that. And he unfortunately had a congenital heart problem that he didn't live um, beyond a year. But oh. that experience of being exposed to medical care and then eventually hospitals, really, I think if, if there's a, a, a silver lining to a bad circumstance when you lose uh, a younger sibling like that is the good that came out of that was that both of us got interested in healthcare careers and both of us um, entered nursing and have had very successful careers. Excellent. Well, you know, and you're right, there are those silver linings and, and I find so often that the nurses that um, are entering the career field have in some way been touched by a nurse in their, at some point in their lives that have, that have led them in the direction of this type of career. So that's fantastic. Um, tell us a little bit about your career path and what led you to the specialty of wound and ostomy care. Sure. Um, I, I got interested in wound and ostomy care very much derived to my initial practice in, in nursing, and that was as a perioperative nurse. I spent mm -hmm. a pretty good number of years as an operating room nurse, and during that time I spent a, a large amount of time uh, with general surgery, so I got to see things like ostomies, what I call diversions. I got to see them actually created up front because I was scrubbed in at the case, helping, assisting with that surgery. And I also got to see perioperative experience, um, some pretty substantially bad wounds that needed to be debrided or needed to be repaired, or things like myocutaneous flaps where you literally take one part of a body tissue, move it over and cover a big, um, large, deep pressure ulcer. I actually got mm -hmm. to see them created up front, and it really piqued my interest. Um, after I left the operating room, I went into uh, critical care nursing, and in the same relationship, I got to see a lot of wound problems. I got to see some, some more patients that had ostomies of various types. And then I got exposed to a wonderful WOC nurse at a hospital in downtown Philadelphia who, when I was teaching um, students, she would see me on the floor and say, oh, come on, you have to see this patient that has this unusual wound. And I would go and see and look at this condition and watch her interact with the patient and watch her interact and, and use critical thinking and how her creative approaches to managing these really challenging wounds or ostomies. Um, that really piqued my interest, and then I decided to go to school. So based on my earlier OR experiences, but also the influence of this really expert, um, you know, WC nurse, I, I really got interested in the whole specialty. So what is it, um, when you do talk about wound and, and ostomy care, um, it seems like a, a, a broader subject, like wounds and ostomies, what do they have to do with each other? Um, would you like to explain a little bit about why those two uh, specialties are paired together? I think they're paired together because of need. One of the things that you find when you go into wound care and specialize in it is one of the most challenging wounds is something called an enterocutaneous fistula, where literally there's some drainage from an internal body component like the intestine is draining out into a wound. It could also be urine, it can also be from the bladder, but most commonly it's from the intestine. It's one of the most difficult type of wounds to manage. So to, un to, to manage that type of wound, an intercutaneous fistula, you really have to understand how the GI system works and some of the things that can go wrong with it. And it's kind of like a, nat a natural evolution that wound and ostomy came together. 
it's actually the whole specialty of continence came associated with woundinostomy too because of the same reason. Often people that have wounds also have, also have problems with urinary and fecal incontinence. So the, the two things, the three things actually go together very well and you find yourself writing, um, you know, suggesting interventions or ordering interventions that address all three areas. And I know I, I, we talked before we started recording a little bit um, about you know, that I, I always think about wound care as, as something that every nurse really needs to have their hand in uh, with regards to managing patients, whether it's prevention of things like uh, formation of pressure ulcers or, or managing a patient with a, with a wound and working with a wound in ostomy care nurse. Um, and, and, and as we have an, an a continually aging population, we're seeing more of these types of wounds in the, uh, in the hospital and the um, out-of-hospital setting. Uh, would you agree with that? Absolutely. I think the, the aging of the American population is going to increase the need for uh, wound care specialists, wound, wound specialist nurses, but also for the bedside nurse who is not specialized in it to have a good understanding of what is occurring. I mean, clearly prevention of wounds is everybody's business and that's really across settings and across age groups because even kids can develop pressure ulcers um, mm -hmm. most most commonly related to device use I might add but prevention is absolutely everybody's job and and bedside nurses have to understand uh, how to care for wounds as well however sometimes wounds can become so challenging for a patient you really need to bring in the specialist who looks at the larger picture, has a deeper understanding of what's occurring physiologically and, and other factors that contribute to the problem, and uh, write some other recommendations for care. And, and I noticed you talked about the patients having a difficult time managing their, their wounds. Uh, be, so it seems to me like there's seems that you're saying there's a there's a large educational component associated with this, which I think lends sounds like it lends itself to the nursing process, where um, nurses are looking at really the whole patient and different aspects of that patient that may affect how they're able or not able to care for their wound. Yeah, you're absolutely correct. Education is absolutely vital to the function of good wound care. It's, it's you, it, it, in the ideal circumstance, you really want to educate that patient and have the patient involved in his or her own care. You may have to involve families. You may have to involve other loved ones. But it's, you know, wound care, I always say, is a team sport. It's, it involves multiple disciplines in terms of the attending uh, provider, the physician or nurse practitioner, whoever's caring for that patient, and the specialist and the nurses and physical therapy and, and it's a, it is a team effort, but the part of the team is also the patient and the family. And education is absolutely critical for the best outcomes. I see that particularly with ostomy care. A lot of times you can head off problems, you can prevent them from happening if you alert the patient and family to what can occur and to prevent things from happening. With, with respect to ostomy care, uh, what are some of the things that nurses can do to prepare for that patient that, they, that presents to them with an ostomy? Um, what, what are some of the things they need to look out for, uh, maybe as a, a, a med surge nurse or uh, a nurse in another setting that they might want to look for when presented with a patient with an ostomy? There, there are tremendous learning opportunities on the internet. Uh, pretty much every manufacturer that uh, provides ostomy equipment also has excellent educational resources. So if, if, for example, if a bedside nurse is in an organization that uses a certain manufacturer's ostomy products, he or she can visit the web page of that manufacturer and will find usually excellent educational resources. Also, most hospitals that have a WSC specialist have also have on their intranet really good resources to educate oneself about what to expect and how to manage um, ostomy challenges. Of course, the WOC specialist is there to make sure that the patient is sighted appropriately pre-op so that the diversion is placed in the appropriate spot on the abdomen. And then that person is also a tremendous resource in terms of referral. If the staff nurse is having a challenge to bring the WOC nurse in at the bedside and deal with that challenge. But there are tremendous resources on the internet. Um, 
one of the things related to wound care is an, an activity I've been involved with, and that's called Why Wound Care? And it has tremendously good uh, learning resources on that. Excellent. Well, I'll have to look for that as well for the, for the links in this uh, particular episode. So let's talk a little bit about the specialty. What are the opportunities in the specialty? I know you're an educator and, and at Rutgers, uh, you all actually have a wound and ostomy care program. Would you like to talk a little bit about that program and what um, a nurse might need to do to prepare if she wanted to enter a program like that? A nurse who wants to enter WOC nursing, um, the basic requirement is to have a bachelor's degree. Uh, and that's been a, rec a requirement since uh, the 1980s. And there are programs that are available across the country. One can find out where they are located by going to the webpage of the Woundostomy and Continence Nurses Society. Yes, at Rutgers Camden, we do have a Woundostomy and Continence Nursing Education Program. And we uh, offer this specialty along with graduate credits. That is particularly uh, popular with students because they're getting the specialized type of nursing education, but they're also getting, getting graduate credits that can count towards an advanced practice degree, like nurse practitioner or clinical specialist. But there's also, as I'd mentioned before, this Why, Why Wound Care resource has on this webpage a list of the educational opportunities that are out there for one to get involved with wound care particularly, and then if you're interested in ostomy care, to go to the WCN webpage. That will tell you, both of those settings will tell you the variety of educational programs that are available. Excellent. So as we wrap up here, why don't you tell us a, uh, maybe that piece of advice you'd offer to a nurse that's listening to this and goes, you know, I, I've been kind of interested in wound care and ostomy care uh, as well and is looking to get into this specialty. What advice would you offer to that nurse maybe, or even a nursing student that's looking in this direction? I think that this specialty of uh, wound ostomy care, wound ostomy continence really, is tremendously attractive. It is a specialty that allows you to have very close relationships with patients. It allows you to use your creative thinking, your critical thinking. It transformed my career. I have had opportunities in my career to travel the world, to do research, to do things I never would have expected if I hadn't entered this specialty. And I would encourage anybody who's interested to research it and to get involved because you're setting yourself up to be able to provide expert care to patients that desperately need it, but you're also empowering yourself to have a wonderful career. And that, that's really a good combination. You'll, it's a career that you'll enjoy going to work every day because you're doing really tremendously good things, important things for those patients that desperately need your care. And it gives you the tremendous opportunity to write and publish, to present, uh, to really impact care, not only in your own country, but across the world. There's tremendously good literature out there and there's emerging research from nurses about what's the best way to do things. You know, we're getting away from ritualistic care we're an evidence-based practice, and wound ostomy care in particular has a, a gen, is generating a tremendously solid level of evidence that we as experts can take to the bedside. And I think that's the exciting opportunity for nurses of the future is they can get involved in this specialty and help develop the science of the future and have tremendously positive relationships with the patients that they're caring for. Excellent. Well, Janice, I want to thank you for taking some time out of your busy schedule to join me here on The Nursing Show. And I'd just like to offer you, uh, if there's ever anything in the news or some groundbreaking research that you'd like to share about wound ostomy and continence care, uh, the door is open here. Just shoot me an email and I'll get you back on the show in the future. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I would, uh, I would like to say that anybody who's interested in wound care particularly this new website that we've created called Why Wound Care is really worth a visit. Um, it's, uh, the information will be listed um, with this link, and it will be very, very helpful for people if you just want to start doing some research to see what's out there. Uh, the website is designed to attract and develop specialized wound care nurses to, to make people aware that this is a tremendously positive specialty, and I would urge them to go take a look because it's fascinating and I think they'll really enjoy it. 
Well, we'll definitely have a link for that in the show notes and make sure that the information gets out there for the audience to check out. And um, if, if not become specialists themselves, increase their knowledge and patient care abilities along the way. Absolutely.